Before we get started, I want to thank my 1,500 subscribers. Now, I know 1,500 doesn't sound like a lot to a lot of you out there, but wow, 1,500 people actually want to watch what I produce or subscribe? That's amazing. So I'm going to take that as a win. So thank you, 1,500. All right, this is a video I've had planned for a while, but uh, along the way, I've just gotten sidetracked. It's a very simple video and one that's probably pretty obvious to many, but may not be so obvious to others. And this one is called Transfer a Basic Program in Print to physical Commodore computers. So in other words, how do I get the printed programs out of here into here without doing this? We're gonna take a look at how to do that on this edition of Retro Combs. So first, a quick explanation of why I'm doing this video along the way while doing my Commodore Plus 4 series. And by the way, if you're not following along, you need to check that out. There's been a lot of programs from the Commodore Plus 4 user's manual that I've had to type in manually, and I don't want to type all of them. And in the last couple of episodes in that series, I decided to try a new technique where I would scan in those pages of code so that I didn't have to retype them. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is how can you quickly scan that program from that printed material and get it into your physical Commodore computer. Let's go ahead and get started. First step of the process is to load Adobe Scan on my mobile device, my Pixel 4 XL, and then I'm going to scan the page and then crop it down to just what I need. We don't want any extraneous text because that will cause us problems later. So let's get this just perfect. Once the scan is complete, we'll give it a name. I'll call it checksum. We will save it. But what I want you to notice is that after it creates a PDF, it does a little bit of OCR magic, and now we can copy and paste that text. It's ready to go. And what I've done is share that to a synced folder on my desktop using Google Drive, so I have access to it here. I've loaded up IA Writer. It's just a text editor that I can use. And you'll see this is what it looks like when I copy and paste. But with a little find and replace magic, we can clean that right up. We're gonna search for all the spaces and we're going to get rid of them. Now watch what happens. You see already we have something that's a lot closer. And then as we just look through, we see some minor things that we need to change, a couple of line breaks. We'll find that some ones were replaced by L's. We can get those replaced. We've got a line down here at the bottom that needs to be moved to the top. But again, just with uh, some quick editing, we can get this program all cleaned up and ready to upload to a disk image. So I'm gonna call this checksum for dim c16 plus 4.txt. I mean, I'm gonna save it as a txt file. You'll see I have it right here. And the nice thing about it is if there are errors that I find, I can go back to that txt file and edit there as opposed to editing on the physical device. Now I'm loading up Vice and what we're gonna do is paste that. So I've just copied and pasted that and you see I already have an error. One of the great things about Vice is you can copy and paste code right from a text file into the Vice emulator. So I go back and I make a few more changes. Just some of the things that I noticed, remember those ones and L's, that conversion didn't happen uh, smoothly. So I'll go back in, I'll new that, I'll paste in the new data again, try it. And still one more error. Let's see what we have here. It looks like another another L. So again, you start to see patterns in the way things are, are not correct and we can make those changes and get those fixed. Let's run it. Looks like uh, we have something and there you go. We have our code, our checksum code in the upper right hand corner. And let's see how it works. You see I type some code, some lines. I get a checksum at the top, it gets updated and everything is working just stellar. Feature of ICE is that we can create disk images. So what I'm gonna do is create a Weinachten disk image, Weinachten 2020, that will contain all the programs that I type in from the 2020 version of the magazine. I'm gonna call this particular program the Plus 4 Checksum Program, so I know it works for the Plus 4 and not the Commodore 64 or VIC-20. And I got it on the directory there for the disk image. I've loaded it up, I run it, let's see if it works. Let's type some code and there it is in red up there. Let's clear the screen, try that again. And you can see my checksum is working after each line. So now we're ready to move this over to the physical computer. And I'm using my Pi 1541, which I have a video on that. Be sure to check the video description below, or maybe there's a little link in the upper right-hand corner for you. So I will copy this disk image over to this SD card. 
So here are the contents of my Pi 1541, and I need a new directory. I'm going to go ahead and create a directory called Vinoctan, which will contain all the programs. That'll make it easy to find when I'm going through the directory listing. I've copied my D81 over. Now we're going to eject that and remove our SD card. And then what we will do is go ahead and place that SD card back into my Pi 1541. So let's go ahead and hook that up to our plus four and turn the, let's see, plug the USB power in, get our power onto it. Now watch this. These are my little built-in buttons that I've created in my 3D printed case to make it a little bit easier to move through the directory on the Pi 1541. And this is what I have on here. Now let's go back and let's load the Vinoctan directory that we created, that you saw me create on the computer. There it is. There's our direct or our disk image right there and it's loading up that disk image and that disk image is loaded so now we should see and have access to our checksum program on our physical commodore plus four let's check it out and see there it is our plus four checksum program let's go ahead and deload that right into the plus four let's go ahead to the end of the line get rid of that prg hit enter searching loading should load pretty quickly and it does let's go ahead and run it and see if it works And we should get a red checksum in the upper right-hand corner. Do we? Yes, we do. So everything's working. So we have transferred that checksum program after OCR scanning it using Adobe Scan, copying it over to an SD card to the Pi 1541, loading it on the Commodore Plus 4, and we have now moved a print version of a program to a physical Commodore computer, in my case, the Plus 4. So how much time can you actually save scanning versus typing? Well, obviously it depends on the length of the program, but let's do a little example, shall we? Okay, we're gonna run a test and see which is faster, typing or scanning. So first of all, I've already done a sample on the plus four. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that one. We're not gonna use that device. Which device will I choose of the ones you see here? Well, let's get the plus four out of here, but let's bring over an original VIC-20. Do I wanna try it with that one? That would be okay. Uh, however, I don't like the way I have to hook that one up. Uh, and so let's try the Mega 65. Uh, that keyboard is just way too good. I don't want to use that keyboard. That would not be fair and not, not an accurate example. Now we can use the Combian Pi 400, which is a great device. Check out my video on that device. Uh, but that keyboard is a little odd. Let's use a the Vic 20. It seems to be more original. I can load up this USB drive with a disk image. And let's go, if I can ever get these things right. There we go, get that plugged in. I can, I'm gonna need to uh, uh, navigate those menus on that DC64 or that the Vic 20 So let's go ahead and get this wonderful USB mouse plugged in. Let's go ahead and turn the device on. And let's configure this VIC-20 so that it resembles more of an original configuration where we just turn it on and it boots right into the Commodore 64 mode. Now we're gonna go ahead and be using Commodore 64 mode. So I'm gonna turn off the VIC-20 mode, go ahead and configure it so it just boots automatically right into classic mode for the Commodore 64. So if I've done everything right and I reboot the system, it should pop right back into C64 mode right after the VIC-20 intro screen. That's a lot of the VIC-20 and the C64-ing, that's for sure, and there we go. So now we've got a great Commodore 64 screen here, and we can load up our disk image that we created over on, in my case, a Mac. And let's see if that's loaded. It is, we've got a little stuff at the top there. We'll let that go. We're gonna load up our C64 checksum, which I've already scanned and added to the disk image. Uh-oh, got an error. Let's go ahead and fix that. And that was just simply uh, bringing in the 3157 blocks free line. But I've cleared that out and we are ready to start typing our program. So throughout this video, you've seen me playing around with this magazine, Vinoctan Off Dem Commodore, or Christmas on a Commodore. And this is a magazine I found online while perusing the Mega 65 forums. I'm not gonna talk a lot about this, but this is a wonderful thing. That I have actually three copies or three volumes of this. If you wanna know more about this, check out the companion blog post for this video. All the information about this magazine will be in there. But every holiday season, you can return to your Commodore and relive your 
are days of the 80s where you were just excited about Commodores and Christmas, put them all together and you get, wrap them in a pretty bow and there you go. So be sure and check out the companion blog post for this. Now, obviously, the one, oh, by the way, did I mention that? And hopefully you saw that each edition comes with this wonderful bookmark and line spacer. So you definitely need that. That's pretty cool. Now, why would I be scanning these in and not typing them? Well, back in the day, back in the 1980s, I could come home from school, no care or worry in the world. I could sit up there on my Commodore VIC-20 computer and I could type in programs to my heart's content all day, all night, two in the morning, get up at seven the next morning, catch the bus, go to school, and I was good to go. Uh, life changes as you get older. You have jobs, responsibilities, jobs, 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 and you just don't have time for that. So there is an occasion where I want to know what a program does and what it looks like, but I don't have time to sit here and type. And this technique is just a little bit faster. I can quickly scan it, convert it, get it onto my .d81 disk image and be ready to go. Okay, let's get the environment all set up for an hour of code on my the Vic 20 and Commodore C64 mode. Got my bookmark, got my program, and uh, need some caffeine. So I've brought down a cup of coffee. And to really set the mood, let's get some music going on. Hey Google, play 80s on 8 on Sirius XM. So here's some of the uh, experiences I had while typing in the program old style, you know, line at a time. First of all, I could feel my hands hurting, especially on that bread bin design as I was lifting up my hand to reach up to the keys. Not very comfortable, I remember those days. Probably would not want to do that for a long extended period of time. Also notice that I got a lot faster as I went along. Now those bottom lines are a lot of data lines with numbers. I wish I'd learned my numbers and typing the top keyboard. I just never did. So I kind of found myself going back and forth and looking and sometimes not looking. And that caused a lot of errors. Speaking of errors, about 75% of my lines were typed incorrectly when I looked at the checksum at the end. So I had to go back and redo it. So that wasn't a whole lot of fun, but it did bring back some memories. I remember being really frustrated by that process. Once I had the program created, I ran the program and found I was not successful. Uh, even despite all the checksums, there was a single line I missed with the checksum. And when I tried to run the program and make the changes, uh, I locked the computer up. And when I did that, I didn't have a good copy saved because I had forgotten that you needed to use a special disk drive command in order to save over an existing file, which I finally found out later, which I'm demonstrating here. Now, once I had all that completed, I decided I wasn't gonna go back in and retype anything. I had an older version of the program that only had up to line 22. I was calling it a day at that point. It was already up to 40 minutes, wasn't gonna do it. So I went ahead and moved on to Adobe Scan and went back to that method. And that's the method I'm going to highlight now. A couple of things I want to point out. You'll notice I had a timer in the lower left-hand corner so you can see how long it's taking. Obviously that timer is sped up and you can see my process here. This is a much longer program but I'm going through and cleaning up the program, doing a little copy and pasting over and over until I get the program right and get all of the bugs out. And you can see it's taking some time but even despite this time, this is a much more enjoyable process than trying to track down individual numbers that you've missed line by line. And I love that I can pop back into that text file, use a modern keyboard, kind of make the changes, do some search and replace functions, and really get to those issues and corrections and make those changes quickly. And then it's just a matter of copying it over to a USB drive, and then we will load that program from that D81 file that we created, and let's see if it works. So 
So now we finally have a program we can run. Let's see what the block program does. Is this really a time-saving technique? It will be for long programs, no doubt about it. However, if you do have a short program, you don't want to scan it in and go through this process. Just go ahead and type it in. And don't forget, along the way, you're going to learn about Commodore Basic if you type in these programs. You definitely want to type in programs if you're trying to learn about Commodore Basic because you'll learn about flow, you'll learn about structure, you'll start to get that muscle memory in your keyboard strokes and it really will make you a better Commodore user. So much like the magazine suggests, these are meant to be typed in, and that's why they don't provide a disc full of these programs. It's designed to help you learn Commodore Basic. That concludes this episode of Retro Combs. Now, if you are confused by the process, no fear. There is a wonderful companion blog post that lists all the steps one by one that you need to transfer that printed program to that physical Commodore hardware. So be sure and check out that blog post. Also, keen-eyed viewers will note that I've had a blue shirt and a white shirt on. This was filmed over a couple of days. So I wasn't gonna wear the same shirt over two days. So you're gonna get a little variety in my apparel. So with a little bit of the mystique of video being shared, Retro Combs out.